When I look into your eyes, I see the next 50 years of my life. Okay, I started out with this one because it's wholesome. But I'm not sure we can get more wholesome than this, so I'm not sure it was a good idea. But honestly, it's very cute. It's very cute. And I really like the 50 years of my life because as much as you want to share your life with a partner and have like an our life together, you can still have your own life that's a little bit separate from your partner's life. You know? And honestly, I, I do think it's beautiful because a lot of... Well, actually, a lot of people in general team tend to be a bit possessive of their partner, and that's real to me, but this is just cute. Hello, my big queers, and welcome back to my channel. After the last video, we, we maybe need to remember that not all cishets are as wildly weird or stupid as the ones in, in that video because are the straight okay or are the cis okay is a peak peak frustration really but there are wholesome straights as well so today we're doing the subreddit of straights being okay to to feel better about straight people again i guess but either way you know the deal before we get started y'all need to get hydrated so grab some water or some tea, or whatever else you like to drink, and then we'll check out some more memes. Are you hydrated? Good, let's go. My wife's so cute, because we both love animals so much, but her way is very pure and genuine, whereas my family is... me, holding up my cat. Stinky! Wife, no, don't be mean. Me, swinging back and forth in the air. <laughs> Stinky bastard, man. Wife, no! My mother, not looking up from chopping veggies. <laughs> Naughty boy, brat cat, wife, distraught. No! There's, there's two types of people loving animals. And you manage to marry the complete opposite. You both love animals. But she's very, oh, who's a cute little boy? Aren't you the prettiest little baby? And you're very, you're such a brat, I love you so much. And then there's me, who somehow manages to do both. Because I have uh, two bunnies at the moment. And they're rascals. Especially one of them. But I'm very, you're so stupid, I love you. Because they're not the smartest rabbits out there. Yeah. But you somehow manage to marry the complete opposite of you. And it's honestly kind of funny to me. I found me a good one. I just had to post this somewhere. I'm so happy and crying. It's a good crying. I just got together with someone and while on a walk, I twisted my ankle bad. He rushed me to the hospital and stayed by my side the full five hours just to make sure I got my splint and then bought me a cane so I don't hurt myself trying to get around the house before grabbing the ice cream. I don't think I can be any more in love with anyone else ever. He really cares about me and it's a feeling you can't describe. I think I want to marry him. He got me out of a horrible situation along with my two cats and moved us in last week. I'm s doing so good and I'm so happy. Yeah, that... That is wholesome. And for your sake, because I know that in the beginning, a lot of people are like this and then they just kind of neglect it along the line when they've been together for years or when they've been married or as soon as they get married to kind of not do these cute things for each other anymore to not take care of each other so well, which is ridiculous to me because if you're dating someone for a long time, shouldn't you care for them more and still like want to do your best to take care of them and know which little things you can very easily do that like even if you're having a stressful day and you don't really have a lot of time, you know you can do this one small thing that will just cheer your partner up. Wouldn't you want to do it? But honestly, I'm I'm glad you're doing okay. This is a very cute story. Sorry about your ankle, but it's still a very cute story. Just a random little story of my dad being the best ally in my life. So recently I found out that my cousin was non-binary. This was a shock to me at first since they're the only other LGBTQ plus family member on, well, both sides of the family other than me. And it was a nice breath of fresh air being able to be myself around someone other than my dad especially at family gatherings on his side since they're all very anti-LGBTQ+. 
Well, recently my cousin came up in a conversation. By the way, they're out and were wearing a pin that had that pronouns on it, so I wasn't outing them to my dad. When I brought up them being non-binary, he had nothing but supportive things to say about them. It really just makes me happy hearing how supportive he is overall. He's always been so supportive to me since I came out and hearing he's so supportive of my cousin as well in such a strictly religious family just warms my heart. By the way, the reason I keep referring to my cousin as my cousin and not by a familial term my dad would call them by because I'm not sure what the right term for a non-binary niece or nephew is since I didn't really give it much thought until my cousin came out. I'd appreciate some help finding the right term for interactions I might have in the future regarding this if anyone can help. Yeah, okay, language can be hard that way. Maybe ask your cousin what they would prefer to be called by your father, because yeah, to you they're just a cousin. In German, there is actually a very distinctive, uh, st distinctive male and female cousin, like you have separate words for that, which kind of sucks, I hate German. That's just one of the reasons why, because at least in English you have a few terms that might be more gender neutral to begin with without having to make up new new language or finding new terms, which isn't a bad thing, but I do think it's more complicated because people are dickheads anyways. But honestly, this is just cute. And I just love this so much because a lot of people just don't question how they were raised. Like if their parents were very, no, but being queer is wrong, they'll just like go along with that because that's what they've had all their life from their parents. You know, just like little shady remarks about people on the street, like, oh, look at that effort over there and stuff like that you know and a lot of people don't question it and just like go with it i'm glad your father's better than that really and was like hey wait maybe maybe we shouldn't hate on other people like that you know yeah yeah go hug your dad from me i guess <laughs> My mom bought my brother, who's a father-to-be, Legos to not get bored while his pregnant wife is waiting in the hospital. <laughs> this is so funny, and he's making her laugh in a time that's supposed to be stressful and nerve-wracking. <laughs> this is wholesome. This is so cute. I mean, Legos, in general, are awesome. So, getting your son Lego in general is a pretty cool idea, but Listen, he's keeping busy, and you know that as soon as this child is old enough to play with these Legos, he's gonna be playing with that child. Because he's excited about toys, and the child is gonna be excited about toys. And honestly, it's just adorable. And honestly, if it cheers her up as well, because if this, this prime woman, if she was like super against it, and would just be annoyed by it, then it wouldn't be cool, because honestly, she's having a hard enough time as it is. I mean, she's about to give birth. But since she's just so entertained by it, it's just so cute. Calling me sis is a grand insult and will earn you a punch in the gizzard if you say it to my face. So you're trans then? <laughs> Don't be obtuse. You're sis or trans. They're the only options. Sis literally just means you're not trans. I don't know. I personally feel like we didn't really need a term for sis. Technically, the definition is accurate, but I still don't like to be called sis. I don't mind people who like to be referred to with different pronouns, etc., but just don't drag me into it. I'm male. Just male. I don't feel the need to add the fact that I would be cis, and I don't really understand how and why all of this started. Again, I don't have any trouble with people who do feel more comfortable with it, don't hate anyone for a reason like that, but I just don't want to be a part of it and should not be dragged into the entire system of all these genders and everything that comes with it. Just wanted to clarify that I don't hate it or anything, but I don't relate to it. I don't feel better with it, and I don't feel the need to be part of it all. Okay, the only reason it exists is to differentiate between cis males and trans males, or cis females and trans females. You could say male, but that also includes trans males, so cis just means that you aren't trans. Hmm, that's actually a good point. Now that I think about it, it makes a lot more sense. Thanks for the explanation. No problem. Generally, people are just assumed to be cis, so you wouldn't go around telling everyone that you're cis. It only really comes up when you're on LGBT ports and things where you got a lot of trans people. I don't get why people get so worked up about it, when odds are they probably never going to be called cis anyways. Yeah, exactly. It's the same with people not wanting to be called a birthing person because they're a mother. Listen, if you're a woman and you identify with the term mother, because you gave birth to your children or you adopted your children. Cool. 
But that doesn't mean that applies to everyone. You know, and that's just kind of where the term cis might come in as well, because it's like, it's just an adjective that you use to describe someone when it's necessary. Usually, it's not going to be necessary. You know? So I really don't get what the big deal is. It's literally just an adjective. It's, it's just a word. You know? <laughs> what is the most a dollar has ever gotten you? Too long to read. A wife, three beautiful children, and frankly, my life as I know it. Story time. Back in junior high, I liked a girl and flirted with her quite a bit. One time, during a band trip, we stopped at a gas station and she bought me a pack of gum. I tried to pay her back one dollar, but she refused. So, I slipped the one dollar into her pocket. She then slipped the dollar in my backpack and so began the back and forth of the one dollar bill. We found silly ways to give it back and forth. I mailed it to her house. She stuffed it in a gum wrapper and offered me a piece. I then decided that I would ask her out on this one dollar. I wrote, will you go out with me and put it in a note and gave it to her. She said, yes, of course it would be a terrible story otherwise, I suppose. About four years later, I still have the same dollar kept away. On our anniversary, I wrote, will you marry me on the bottom of the dollar? We've been married for 15 years and have three awesome kids. We still have that dollar stored away. And for, for reference, this is the dollar. And also update of, from 2020. I logged back in today um, to find this has gone a little bit viral a year later. Thank you for all your kind words. A few days after the original post, we both decided to frame the one dollar. Here's the picture of it. This is... See, this is just cute. We don't like the straight people pulling misogynistic shit of Haha, my wife is so annoying, like, why do I have to put up with her? This is the opposite. It's just a cute listen. It started out so funny. We just passed this dollar bill back and forth because she bought me a pack of gum. Listen, of course, like having a cool origin story like that isn't actually necessary to have a good relationship, but it's still so cute when it happens. To my wife, I wish I could turn back the clock and find you sooner and love you longer. I may not be your first date, your first kiss or your first love, but I just want to be your last everything. I love you forever and always. Again, we've seen too many ugly straight mugs and like, haha, my wife is crazy mugs. You know, this is just cute. This is cute because as much as I come for people being like overly possessive or jealous, knowing you're monogamous and wanting to spend the rest of your life with this one person isn't something I'm gonna come for. And if you wanna buy a person a cute mug like this, to be like, listen, I love you. I don't know how I lived my life before you because it doesn't really make sense to me now because I, I, I want you in my life. I can't ever picture my life without you again. Honestly, that's cute. I'm a proud wife of a freaking awesome husband. And uh, yes, he bought me the shirt. <laughs> this is adorable. I love when funny heterosexual themed clothes don't make misogyny the punchline. Yeah, that's what I mean. Because this is... This is just the funny of, I I love my wife, I want to get her a funny shirt. It's going to be very obvious that I, the husband, bought her the shirt, but I still want to buy it. That's the shirt, and I appreciate it. If my wife has a better job than me, then good for her, what the fuck? She didn't go to school to be my slave. <laughs> go, best friend, that's my best friend. Yeah, I, I don't really get people who don't have a mindset along these lines. Why would you, why would you care? Why would you care? Listen, as much as I like to joke around that if my partner would make enough money, I would gladly become a house husband. It still holds true. I mean, listen, if one of you earns my money, okay, cool. If you're not going to be an insecure little dickhead about it, it's not actually an issue. You know, I know a lot of people are very insecure about money. Uh, but honestly, I, I, the whole, okay, no, but I don't want a wife that makes more money than me because my masculinity is gonna crumble and fall apart and I can't have that is ridiculous. But he, he's not having any of it. He's just like, listen, so why she owns more? She's gonna take me on a day and buy me dinner. I don't care. <laughs> 
Yes, you're less attractive at 35 than at 25 as a woman. This used to be common sense 50 years ago. Okay, um, my wife has always been beautiful, but she looks more like a woman now and less like a girl. I find her even more attractive than I used to. Again, this is what I mean. If you're together with someone for a longer time, shouldn't you want to take care of them more? And shouldn't you appreciate them so much more and then also just find them more beautiful or attractive? Because yeah, obviously, if you've been together for 10 years, they're gonna look wildly different, same as you. Like, especially if you got together, like, very young, if you're one of those couples that actually have been dating since they're, like, teenagers or, like, young adults, of course you're gonna look different with 18 than with 28. But you grow older together, like, it's not just, like, you're a vampire and you're gonna stay looking like you're 22 and your partner suddenly looks like they're 40. And trust me, you're gonna look older too. And I don't see why people are weird about it. My girlfriend sent me flowers to my office. It was our anniversary. My coworkers had seen me with flowers before because one time I bought them on the way to work to give them to her after. So most thought they were from me to her. When they discovered they were actually for me, everyone's heart melted and some of my male coworkers said they wished they'd receive flowers someday. They sat at my desk all day. Everyone who passed by complimented them and I couldn't have been happier. I love her so much. Now they sit happily in my room while I wonder myself what I did right to have such an amazing partner. And another installment of men just being like, listen, flowers are pretty, and it's a nice gesture she did to show me she cares about me and she loves me. So why wouldn't I love the flowers because I love her? Like, even if you don't particularly love flowers or don't have a favorite flower, you would still appreciate your partner doing this for, for you. See, the, I, we need more of this. We need more wholesome couples, you know? <laughs> Eight years ago, on a Sunday morning, my wife was one day from delivering a baby girl and felt miserable. Her only comfortable clothing was her renaissance dress. She was self-conscious wearing it to church, so I just wore my armor too. <laughs> but listen, if I go anywhere and that's just like a random couple with like matching renaissance outfits, I just think it's cool. A lot of people are probably gonna look at you weird, but honestly, I would just think it's cool, <laughs> because you might be crazy, but at least you're crazy together. But in this case, just wearing whatever is comfortable because you're so pregnant, you can like not really be comfortable to begin with. It just makes sense, but it's also just funny to me. <laughs> how old is your child and you don't know how to brush her hair? She's two. Mate, I'm telling you as one father to another, this isn't good enough at all. Once you've got through this issue, you need to sit down and really go over with your wife what all the parts of your daughter's routine are and needs are, and start getting practice at doing every last one of them. You're not the babysitter, your wife shouldn't have to manage you. She worked all of this out, you could've as well. She wasn't more naturally talented at doing this, she just put the effort in. Now it's time for you to take a hard look at the gulf between your behavior and being a good and present father and a reliable carer for your own child. She's still young enough that if you fix it now, she'll grow up only knowing you as being as engaged and physically reliable as her mother. You want that more than you will know until you realize you can't have it. Yeah, this is so weird to me. Like, I get it. If only one of the parents works, of course, the parent that spends more time with the children because they're at home more is gonna have more experience. But that's not really an excuse to not put the effort in. Because if you come home after a long work day and ignore your family or your kids, or you're just grumpy to them because you're stressed, they're gonna remember that versus you coming home, you know, maybe taking a, a few minutes before actually going home to decompress and then go inside or then drive the rest of the way home because you're gonna stop at a park somewhere to get like a little bit of fresh air and calm before going home. If that helps you, then come home and be present with your children and, I don't know, play with them before dinner or whatever, brush their hair, pick out their outfits for the next day, do the homework, whatever it is, because it takes a lot to raise children. Honestly, it's just gonna make a difference and they're gonna remember. And if, you, if you're if you okay with being a shitty parent, then don't. 
But yeah, um, the sooner you fix it, the younger your children are, the better it is, because the less they'll remember you not being there. <laughs> when we're together, darling, every night is Halloween. <laughs> I'm not even sure, because the people keep saying they both have very big bisexual energy, which is fair. Not really straight being okay, but a very straight passing couple being okay, I guess. But generally, taking the atoms as a measure of if people treat you well or not is kind of a good idea. I mean, the bar is very high, I'll be honest. The bar is very high. But still, you don't want to be lowballing on how well your partner treats you, I guess. <laughs> be a straight woman. Don't care about gender norms. Give your man all surprise hugs and kisses you can. Cheek kisses, lips kisses, nose kisses, forehead kisses, when he bends. All kisses, <laughs> lol. Your man hears I love you at least once a week. It starts to wonder if you're some affectionate freak, it's a cultural difference, or should I thank my parents? <laughs> Listen, maybe it's a queer thing, but once a week, like telling your partner you, tell you love them once a week, seems very little, but I guess you don't have to say it to show that you love them because giving them all the kisses or taking care of them in other ways. Also, like, same effect, like, that's how you show you care for someone. Like, you're not gonna go around telling them you love them 50 times a day. You just kind of show it with other things as well. But wh why, why isn't this normal? Because no matter someone's gender, they like feeling appreciated and loved. So, um, why wouldn't you? Uh, okay, honey, I'm leaving now. <laughs> okay, I'll meet you halfway. See you soon, loser. Ooh, I think that's it. Better check. <laughs> uh, yep, it's him. <laughs> Listen. As serious as life is, that doesn't mean you have to be that serious. Because, well, actually, life is too serious or too stressful, as is, there's really no need to not be goofy. There's all the reasons to be goofy with your partner, especially. So, um, this is, this is helpful, because a lot of couples aren't gonna do this. So, you know, but imagine how funny it'd be. You do this, and the other person responds by doing it back. And then you walk towards each other and you're just like, wait, that's... You're not my... You're not... You're not my partner. You're not who I was expecting. It'd just be funny. Listen, it would just be funny if this is just a random person who randomly did it back because they always do that with that partner too. It'd just be funny. I'm just saying. This Australian man built a tricycle that allows his disabled wife to go for bike rides. Again. Wholesome. I get that most people maybe not be able to remodel a bike or build a bike. But listen, if you can, why wouldn't you? Because then you can just like go on nice rides together and go to the beach or just get some fresh air, you know? And I'll say that's just cute. Uh, using my alt account because she follows my main account. My girlfriend of five years has been deaf since she was six. She reads lips pretty well, but prefers sign language. I didn't know a single sign when I met her, but I could tell right away that there was something between us, so I started learning after I got home from a first date. Fast forward a few years, I'm now fluent in ASL, and we use it to talk most, almost exclusively. When she's not looking though, I talk to her even though she can't hear me or see my lips read. I tell her how much I love her how I'm going to marry her someday, how beautiful she is, etc. I've been practicing proposing, so it's not so terrifying when I actually do it. She has no idea, and I plan to keep it that way. <laughs> I'm not for keeping big secrets from your partner, but this is a secret I'm very okay with, because it's just cute. Because instead of just thinking about it in your head how much you love your partner, like most people maybe do, or I, I hope most people in relationships do, and it's not just me. Like, of course you think about it in your head, how much you love them, more than you tell them, or 
maybe think about if you'd like to marry them or what you still like to do together if it's just like going on trips or whatever you're planning because not everyone wants to get married and that's chill too like i'm not even saying that but you know it's just cute people are cute well people have the potential to be cute a lot of people aren't but these people are cute men deserve romantic physical affection too kiss his forehead cuddle him rub his back play with his hair caress his ear Men deserve non-sexual physical touch and a place where they can be physically vulnerable. It's kind of sad that this needs to be said, but I'm I'm glad someone did. Because yeah, why again, why wouldn't you? Because regardless of your gender, if you don't wanna pretend you're all no macho, I'm a man, I don't need it. I I like sex, that's the only attention I need. If you're not like that, then deep down whether or not you're actually openly admitting it, you would love these things. Maybe not all of them. Like, I don't think I like people touching my ears or my hair particularly, but you know, still, like, why wouldn't you show affection to your partner in ways that aren't necessarily sexual? You know? <laughs> Some years back, my wife and I got into the habit of asking each other, do you want comfort or solutions when the other was having a bad time? That one sentence can save us from an argument nine out of 10 times. This is honestly just, just helpful. I think a lot of us have maybe seen this tip around before, but still. Literally, literally this. Because sometimes, someone just really just wants to vent and get it all out and just like, talk out the frustration really, and just need someone to listen. And sometimes they're like, at a face with their problem where they do want a solution, and don't just like need to vent. And just making sure where they're at because you can't necess because you can't necessarily know is honestly just smart. Um, my girlfriend and I tried to surprise each other with a Lego set for our first anniversary. We bought the same set though. This is just as wholesome as it is hilarious to me. Because you can tell how funny you think it is that you both had the same stupid idea of we both love Lego, let's get this set because it's really cute, it's like two birds in love, it's fine, it matches us. But then you both had the same thought. It's adorable, but it's so funny. Every Saturday, my wife and I go shopping. For lunch, we get sandwiches and soup and sit in the car and talk, and somehow we always just end up laughing. Just two people in their late 30s, eating in a used Hyundai, snort laughing and huffing down carbs. I look forward to it each week. We have so much in common. We both love soup and snow peas. We love the outdoors and talking and not talking. We could not talk or talk forever and still find things to not talk about. Honestly, whatever habits just fit you and your partner, or routines that fit you and your partner. Because some people would look at this and be like, okay, no, but that, that seems so boring to me. That just seems boring to me. But for these two, it fits, and it's adorable. And having just something you can always do with your partner is cute. And honestly, having that connection where you can just either just be comfortable in silence, and just like sit in the same room and each do your thing separately. But also just like talk to for hours is pretty cool. <laughs> the first time I cried in front of a girl was the first year of university. I was in the library working late at night, feeling sad and missing my family, which is <laughs> weird for me lol. I was in a single person study room. My new girlfriend just happened to call and could tell I was crying. I couldn't get any words up so I hung out embarrassed. She texted for my location and I texted it back. She literally sprinted from her home to me, probably a 5 minute sprint to make that distance, and she was with me. She hugged me and asked me to get some tea with her so we could talk about it. That's when I knew I was onto a winner. Coming up on 10 years together now, I've cried a handful of times, but now I know when I need to, I won't be judged. Again, why isn't everyone like this? Listen, some people cry more than others. Some people don't really cry, but that doesn't mean that it's not okay to cry. Like, I'm not saying you should cry often, because I I never cry, really. But I know that my girlfriend wouldn't judge me. She would just be chill with it. Like, she would try her best to cheer me up, and she would probably be very confused because she's never seen me cry before. She would be like, wait, wait, what? Wait, are you actually crying? The only time I cry is because of onions, because, yeah. But I know that if I actually would cry, she would never judge me for it. And she would just, like be there for me and try to cheer me up or find out what's wrong. You know, and honestly, just being there for someone 
regardless of the gender because again like what does it matter what does it matter if you're a guy or if you're a girl or whatever your gender is listen if you're crying you maybe just want someone there for you you know <laughs> local museum posts image of a 1965 school desk inscribed with Benny and Linda. Benny responds in the comments. <laughs> yes, I carved that sitting in the auditorium of Central High School my freshman year before leaving for La Salle. Linda and I are still together after having three wonderful girls and 50 years of marriage. Told my friends in fourth grade I was going to marry Linda and here we are heading for 51 years together on August 1st. Smartest thing I ever did in my life was marry this kind and pretty lady. Thank you for sharing this. Well, thank you, Benny, for commenting on it, because seeing little notes of, oh, this person plus this person isn't really that cute. Because a lot of people having crushes in like fourth grade or something doesn't really mean too much, you know, because usually what happens if kids move on after two weeks? But just seeing how maybe just a few of these childhood crushes actually just turned into functional long-lasting relationships <laughs> is very cute to see. So thank you Benny. <laughs> I don't know about you but I feel better about straight people again. <laughs> Maybe not a lot because then as soon as you're gonna walk out the door or go online you're gonna see some weird things again. But then again a lot of people have potential to be really weird in relationships. So yeah. It's just good to know that some people are actually capable of having good relationships and being nice to their partner, you know? <laughs> but either way, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed these wholesome stories and pictures. And I hope you're hydrated. If not, maybe consider drinking something now. But either way, I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back in a few days with my next video.